So we have five vlogs done. I know you're itching for more. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here and it's time to continue with our cup of cheer quilt. So I'm thinking we might be able to get two done today. Um, we'll see how it goes. So the first one, we're going to pull out our packet for number 34, page number 34, the steam. And you can see why I'm thinking we could do two. This is a really simple one. When the, the packet is almost empty, you know it's a quick, easy block. So on this one, let's go over what we need very simple looking block and it's our first mylar block it might even be our only mylar block i don't recall so on page 34 so the first thing that we're going to need is this light gray with white polka dots fabric and back it with fusible stabilizer for your fabric so you can make sure that it doesn't pucker so on this one, we are going to start with it at four and a half by six and a half, four and a half by six and a half for our main fabric. And then there's one kind of applique piece. I don't know if you'd call it applique because it's mylar, but that's it. One little piece of mylar. And just a warning, these things get stuck in your um, other, they'll attach onto other fabrics, attach onto your packet. So try not to lose it. It's easy to lose these. So on our mylar, it is going to be two by four for the mylar. So um, a couple things on this one, but first let me tell you about the batting. So on the batting, we're going to always do it a half inch larger than our final cut size. And our final cut size on this is two and a half by four and a half. So that means you want three by five for your batting. All right. Now on the quilting for this one, we're gonna use, where is it? Um, lines six. So I pulled it up in software just to see what it's gonna look like. And just a warning, if you pull up the wrong one, um, there is both a horizontal and a vertical of this lines six. So if you pull up the wrong one, the lines are just going the wrong way. And, it actually doesn't matter at all, but I noticed it right away. I was like, why does this one look different than the picture in the book? And it's because I had chosen the first one, didn't realize there are two. So there are two for each of the sizes. So go past the horizontal one and get the vertical one. So two by four vertical design of lines six, and that will have your lines going this way. I hope that makes sense. All right. So um, that's one thing. The other thing I wanted to mention is that the steam will go down into our um, batting line, even past our batting line, into our cut line. So I don't want you to think, oh, mine's off, I'll pull it up. Don't do anything like that. It's supposed to be like that. So you'll see, we're going to do our quilting. And then when we do the the stitching for the steam part, it's down below our batting. It's gonna be right at our cut line. And so that'll make it like it's right on top of our hot cocoa or whatever you, you interpret that to be. So that will be all fine. Don't think that you've done something wrong. And then the other thing with this one is that the cut instructions are a little bit different since it is a, um, I think our final cut size two and a half by four and a half. So instead of using one of our pop rollers, we're actually gonna cut at the basting stitch. So here I've been telling you all along, cut out, take out those basting stitches. On this one, you're not going to. And I pulled it up in software and it is um, two and a half by four and a half. So make sure that your fabric is stabilized. You don't want it pulling in and changing the size of the block. So we are actually going to cut just outside of the basting stitch. You don't want to cut right on the basting stitch. You just are, we're, you'll see, we're going to line up our ruler right on that, uh, basting stitch and trim right past it. So we're not going to have to worry about it, um, being too small, but you will want to make sure that it is stabilized. This one will be important for stabilization since we are going to cut it basically at the basting stitch line. All right, so that is it for Mylar. Super simple block um, with those couple little caveats that I mentioned. And I think we should do another one. What do you think? Hey everyone, so I wanted to show you real quick, um, just a super quick visual of the steam block. I'm going to open up in Brilliance Essentials just to give you a very, very quick visual um, of what it's going to look like with the design. So I'm going to go to this merge stitch file 
and I'm going to open up the quilting and we are using the two by four line six. Where are we here? Uh, line six right there. So one other thing I wanted to show you is notice that when I click on line six, it doesn't say, do you want to use block by block version or CBT version? And that's because it only comes in block by block for this. And you'll see why in just a second. Excuse my phone. All right. So um, the vertical, we want two by four and we want the vertical. So here is the horizontal. That's two by six. Sorry, two by four. So here's the horizontal and you can see that the lines go this way. And then on the vertical, the lines go this way. We're going to use the vertical one in two by four. So just double click on that and it brings it to the center of your um, hoop. And it, I don't have my hoop selected right now, but because um, I'm just doing a really quick visual. So then I'm going to bring in my, oh, so before I bring the next one in, I wanted to show you. So see how the quilting goes over the lines here? It will go into the stitch allowance. And that's why this one only comes in a block by block version. CBT versions, they all stay within the block. So it would be within this section here only, whereas the ones that go over the edge into the seam allowance, those are the block by block version only. Okay, so this, any of the ones that are, they're called orange designs. And if you go on to Kimberbell, you can see that it shows them on orange, on an orange background. And that is the ones that are block by block that go into the seam allowance. And it doesn't matter because we've cut our batting out before we get to this point. So as long as the batting is out of the seams, then it's not going to matter. If you were to keep the batting in there and then it stitches over it, you're going to have a really hard time getting um, the batting out. So that's why we trim it first. And then this stitching just goes into the seam allowance. And it's so that it's just an effortless look. You can see that once that part is stitched away, it looks like it. there's not a stop and stop at the edges. It will go into the seam so that it looks like it's just effortless. All right, so that's the block by block in the two by four vertical um, lines six. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the um, steam design. Let's see, where do I have that? It's up here, cup of cheer, embroidery files, pez for my machine, cup of cheer quilt, and then it is a mylar block. So it's in this number four folder. And there's just the one mylar block. So I double click on that and notice it goes to the center. If I were to click on just the steam, just this part, you can see from these um, guides here, it is in the center, but it looks like it's not because there's this space up here and there's this that is passed. If I click outside, you can see it. So see this part here will go into the seam allowance. And so it, it can be confusing. It might make you think, oh wait, I gotta move this up. You don't, leave it just where it is. That is all of Kimberbell's plan. They've got it, don't worry. All right, so that's just a really quick visual just so that you can see um, clear blue tile version versus block by block version and that the steam will go into our seam allowance. And again, our batting is already going to be cut away, so it's not going to matter. All right, so that's it. That's all I wanted to show you for the steam block. So let's go ahead and get started.
So I have to show you something. I just received this today. I, I received a few gifts today. Look at this. How cool is that? And those that know me from a past life, I was a cookie decorator and I received a decorated cookie. I couldn't believe that. That is so beyond cool. That made me smile huge. So I think we should do a second block. Um, let me know if you're up for it. I'm thinking this is another simple one because you can see there's almost nothing in our packet that means that it's a simple block so this is going to be on page 27 it is cheer one so there's a couple things to this one as well that i want to make sure to point out so one thing is that some people think that they can do cheer one and cheer two together and oh that'll be so cool i'll get ahead of the game don't do it <laughs> don't do it the reason is they are in different sections, so you don't want to attach those yet. Do not attach them. If you do the two blocks, great, go for it. I'm not going to do it now. I've got it destined for later in our project, but um, at least don't sew them together. Not yet. They're in different sections. All right, so like I said, this is on page 27. We have our main fabric, which is the white with doodles on it. No, Christmassy things on it. Oh, cute. Peppermint candy canes, holly leaves, and swirls. Very cute. And it's white. And it is a large one at 10 and a half by 8 and a half. And there's going to be embroidery only on this, not applique, embroidery only. So that means you really want to make sure it's stabilized well. I'm using, like I said, uh, fusible backing, Kimberbell fusible backing on the back of all of my fabrics. And so far, so great. No puckering at all, even on those snowflakes, which was quite a bit of stitching on those. So anyway cup um not cup sorry cheer one cheer one so ten and a half by eight and a half for your main fabric and that's the only fabric no appliques nothing like that um so i do have a couple of um notes on this one but let's talk about our batting so our quilting design we are going to use cup one that'll be perfect for cup of cheer right oh cute cute have a cup of cheer and we're going to use the the cup one quilting design we're going to use it in six by eight and six by eight so that means that we want a piece of batting that is seven by nine seven by nine you actually determine it it's really nine by seven because it's sideways um, but you always determine it by your final cut size of the project and the final cut size on this one is a little different. So we're gonna go by our quilting design and it's an inch larger than our quilting design just to thoroughly confuse you all. So six by eight on the quilting and nine by seven on your batting. All right, so let's talk about the quilting real quick. Like I said, we're gonna do cup one in six by eight. So there's a couple things with this. When we load this one in, we're actually gonna move the design. We're gonna do the quilting first, and then we're going to bring in the quilt, the embroidery design, and we're gonna to have to move it. So I think I'm gonna do it on my embroidery software just because then I can make sure it's absolutely accurate. So we want this, it's gonna be um, vertically centered it's a sideways project by the way so vertically centered but then we want the cheer part the ending of the word so the the blue e is the ending of our design for today and that blue e the edge of the blue e we want a half inch from the end of the project so that means past the batting so the batting is a quarter inch there's a quarter inch from the batting um, to the main fabric placement line so that's how you can tell one quarter inch from there and then one quarter inch in even from there excuse my husband coughing so a half inch um, from the edge of the project is where we want that e to land so we're going to um, you can do it on your your embroidery machine you can move it i'm not sure that you can actually see exactly that it'll be a half inch though so that's why i'm going to use my embrilliance essential software there's even this really cool tool it's a ruler and i can measure from the end of the project to the end of that e and make sure that it is exactly a half inch so that's what i'm going to do like i said you can use your embroidery uh, machine and move it over um, and Hopefully your machine will tell you when you're at a half inch. You can eyeball it. I mean, it will be a quarter inch from the batting line. So it's not that hard, but um, that is where you want it. Bottom line, however you want to do it, but a half inch from the end of the project or a quarter inch in from the batting. All right. And then, like I said, don't sew. If you do both of the blocks, both of the cheer blocks, I'm only going to do one for now. 
Um, but if you do both of them, just do not sew them together yet. You'll think you're ahead of the game and you're not. <laughs> you're kind of messing yourself up. All right. Um, and then we will talk about the cutting at the end because there are some special cutting instructions. But for now, the big thing is that we're going to move the design um, from the quilting and the embroidery design. And then you are going to not sew the, the, this together with cheer two. All right, half inch from the right inner edge of the ruler. Oh, that's different. We'll talk about that. That's the cutting. All right, so anyway, let's get started on cheer one. Hey everyone, so on the cup of cheer, not cup of cheer, just cheer one block, on the cheer one block on page 27, like I mentioned, it has a little bit of different instructions in that we have to move it. And so I wanna give you a visual on this. I'm actually gonna save mine using my embroidery machine, embroidery software. Um, you can do it on the machine, like I mentioned, but the most accurate will be on software. And so that is what I'm gonna do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open and brilliance essentials. That is the software that I use and I have opened it up to my 10 by 10 hoop since our quilting is what was it? Six by eight. So we would want a hoop size. That's at least seven by 12, um, a 10 by 10 hoop will work. Um, your eight by eight will not fit. Uh, you want something in a six by 10 will not fit unless you take out those steps three and four like I showed on the very first video. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep this as my 10 by 10. Uh, maybe actually I'm going to change it to my seven by 12. So I'm going to go up to this preferences folder and I'm going to choose my seven by 12 hoop and say okay. And then I go up here to that H button to see my whole hoop. All right, so I'm going to bring in first the quilting design. So I'm going to go here to this merge stitch file and we are using cup one as our quilting design. So quilting bundle and cup one and embroidery files and block by block and Pez. All right, and we're looking for the six by eight. Right there, double click on that and it'll go to the center of your hoop. So from here, we want to bring in our, um, the cheer embroidered design. So I'm gonna go to merge stitch file and close up the quilting. So it's out of my way. All right, and there's my cup of cheer quilt and embroidery files, Pez, cup of cheer, and then this is a stitched block. So I'm going to click on that and then they'll all start showing. See, there's the ones that we made yesterday for the snowflakes. There's that second one of um, cheer. Remember, we're just going to do the first one today. So it's this one here. I'm going to double click on that and it goes to the center. So I want to click on this and let you see. So these black dots that are in the edges and the shows horizontally and vertically and it shows that it is in the center. If you automatically bring in a design, it's going to automatically go to the center. And yet we want this one moved. So if you look at the directions on page 27, it tells us that we want this design to be, this is another thing I want to point out. What it says is align the block embroidery file centered from left to right. So I always get confused because even though the design is turned sideways, I still visualize it as the, the right way. Like if you were looking at the block and it wasn't turned sideways for our hoop, I imagine that. So in the directions, I always get off on that a little bit, but it, what it is saying is left to right as it is in the hoop. So left to right would be this part. It's saying to make sure that horizontally really it is centered, okay? And you can see that it is centered. So right, these two little markings here tell us that the design is centered um, this way, horizontally and vertically, but we want to make it centered from left to right. So this part and this part, we want this centered, meaning we want the same amount of space on each side, which it automatically is. 
and you can tell that because of these so but we want to move it centered from left to right and a half inch from the top of the quilting so see this to me is the top but it's not because it's sideways so this is the top in case you get held up on that I, I get I have gotten held up on that before like what are they talking about the top this is the top because the design is sideways and they show a picture of it in page 27 so if you don't complicate it, <laughs> you'll be fine. All right, so half inch from the top of the quilting design. So this is the top right here. This is that uh, main fabric basting stitch right there. You can see that there. This is the top of the design because we have our batting or because we have our quilting with our embroidery design. So what it's saying is that it wants the half inch from the end point. So to me, the end point is the ends of the E right here. This is the farthest point or the end of the P on the little tail of the P. Either way, it doesn't matter. But you want it a half inch from here. All right, so we know that this is a quarter inch from the basting stitch to the batting stitch is always a quarter inch. So we want in another quarter inch from there. So you could visually just move it. So that looks maybe a little big right there probably. And then the other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're using these lines here to keep it centered on the left and the right. All right. So now here's the cool part. And Brilliance Essentials has this ruler. See this ruler right here? If you click on that, you can click on the edge of the design, the ed the very farthest point, which is the basting stitch. From here, I'm going to do it over here where that E is. So from here and then bring it down to that E and look over in the left hand corner, the very left hand corner of this um, software. I can't move it or my ruler will move. But from there, you can see, let's see, half inch exactly. If I do it from the very edge, mm, wow, that was pretty good. So really, you could visually do this as well, depending on your eyesight, I guess. I don't know. But so the, what I did when I moved it is I just looked at how much space there is here and then made it that much space from here. And like I said, that ruler is awesome because it will tell you. So if you go right from this edge here to the edge of the basting stitch, keeping that ruler straight, and look at down in that left hand corner see where it says zero by half inch that's the the ruler size so i'm going to move it over here this is where i'm pointing um, when i say look in the lower left hand corner look at down here i can't do it when i'm using my ruler but that's this right here is where i'm telling you to look for that measurement and like i said you would just click on that basting stitch and then clip, bring it down to the E, and you can see right there, right now it's at 7 16 so I'm actually not at the edge. So you would just move it. So if you had your, um, your cheer embroidery design a little bit too low or a little bit too high, you would just move it because that ruler is telling you how accurate you are. So I have mine right. Um, so it's centered th from these two black squares that we know that it is centered. And then we have it a half inch. We tested that from the ruler. So I'm going to go ahead and do a save as. And like I said, you can do this on your embroidery machine or you can use it, do it on embroidery software. To me, embroidery software is going to be more accurate, um, but you can certainly do it either way. So I'm going to do a file save as now that I've got it moved to where I want it. And I don't need to um, change any, join anything, nothing like that. We're just doing one. So I'm going to do save stitch file as, and I'm in stitch blocks. That's perfect. So if I look for, there it is, cheer one. So if I click on cheer one, remember I mentioned this yesterday. If you, you could just name it, you could name it cheer design moved, whatever you want, or you can click on the one that's already here so that it will come in the right order, but then make sure to change the name or add to the name so that you're not saving over your original file. If you just click on it with that same name, it's going to save over that file. It will ask you first to let you know if you're ma making a mistake, but just don't do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna just say moved. So see, I have cheer one moved, and I'm gonna say save. 
or you could say with quilting designer, whatever you want it to be. I don't have my machine on, or I would click utility send to Solaris, and then it says file sent to machine. It's pretty cool. I love that. Um, one of the gals in our group just got a new Brother Luminaire the other day. Very excited for her. I don't remember her name. I'm sorry. I'm drawing a blank. I want to say it was something with an H. But anyway, very exciting. And the picture with her with her new machine was super cute. Very, you could tell how excited she was. All right, so that's all you have to do to um, move the design. You can see it's very simple. You're just moving it um, closer to that um, batting line. And the reason is because the next part of the design will be the R. And so it'll finish off this word. So you don't want a big gap between the two letters, obviously. All right, and that's it. Easy peasy. So let's get stitching. My shirt today because I always get these questions so remember I put this information under every video every video that I make if I'm wearing a shirt that I have embroidered on I always add the information underneath the video um, and I showed you in the very first video how to find the information under the video so you should be all set so my shirt today is a very cute Volkswagen Beetle because I have a pink Volkswagen Beetle and it says find adventure I added the wording it is a super cute design I think it was bows and clothes if I recall but I will add the information under the video like I always do and by the way <laughs> <laughs> so normally I would be wearing my Christmas shirts. We're working on a Christmas quilt. It's too hot. I live in Idaho now. It's 95 degrees here today. We have had the hottest summer in like a hundred years, I think is what the news said. So it's hot. I'm wearing 
my summer shirts. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did you subscribe? Don't forget.